This video was made possible by you. If you want to save time and support what I do, check the link in the description that will take you to my store where you can purchase the source file for what we're creating in this video, as well as other tutorials on my channel. Thank you for your support and let's get back to the video. So in this video, I'd like to go over the file, the design system that we have in place and do a little bit of an audit and maybe change a few things here and there and just organize it a little bit better and make it easier to work with in general. There are also going to be some minor design changes. For example, I think this gradient on the menu is not necessary. So I think I'm just going to disable it for now. I feel like keeping a strong contrast is going to work best. And then the same with buttons. So I think I'm going to change the button component. I think I'm going to remove the stroke on this one. And I think I'm going to also remove the stroke on this one. I think this also warrants some kind of a design change on this button because it's basically a pressed down state, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that would be pressed. As you can see, there is an interaction setup in place. So I think we can either keep it the identical to the primary one without being pressed for now or think about a change. Now, it's challenging because what we're doing here, for example, what we have been doing with the press down interaction is that we try to simulate as if the button were pressed in, as if there was a, like a dent in the surface. But that's very difficult to make with, with the purely a black button because you cannot make a color that is darker than black. One solution now that I look at it would be simply removing the shadow. So here you can see that we have a shadow on the normal state. So I think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to just keep the shadow removed from the pressed down state and I'm going to just assume that's going to be enough. Additionally, I think with the button, I think we could make them rounded. I like fully rounded. I just feel like that's something that is more widespread and more up to date currently. And similar to here, similar to to the secondary, to the primary button, the secondary button, I think we could go for a darker color on the stroke. I think we could make it just to have a higher contrast on the button. I think we could do gray one from our design system, like a darker gray. And then in terms of the stroke on the pressed down state, that wouldn't be a, a gradient anymore. But again, also let's just go for solid color. We do have some inner shadow. I think we could keep that just to make a dent in the surface. Let's see what this looks like. Yeah, I think this feels a little bit better. Let's try and reset the prototype. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think this is pretty good. There's a little dent, so that's nice. And also the menu has more contrast, so I do like that. So it's pretty nice. So with the primary button, you can see it's very subtle now, right? We press it down and the shadow disappears. So it's pretty cool. Awesome. So now let's just actually reorganize this a little, little bit better here. I think we could utilize sections. So whatever we're doing here, I think we should do that over here as well. So what I'm thinking is that instead of using these headlines, we could do like sections. So let's just go for text styles on this section. And then just put all of our textiles into this section, make it go 20, like what 50 points from, from the edges. Yeah, that seems pretty nice. We could also do colors. So let's do colors, remove the contents, move it over here. Also 50. Now, of course, as you can see, we have created a bunch of buttons on top of our basic one and they are spread across this section over here and this one over here as well. So I think we could actually merge these. Why don't I call this buttons? We can create a different section for micro interactions later. For now, since all of this is just buttons, let's just merge them together. So let me move this towards the top. I think I'm going to go for white and then just move the button over here. All of this move more to the right. 
and then just put it here like that. Excellent. Let's make sure this spacing is 50, let's say. And then this spacing is also 50. And that we have 100 from all sides, just to keep it nice, neat and tidy. And let's move this headline. Move it over here somehow. We're going to rearrange this later. Now, I think that the text field, right? I think that for the text field, we're going to create, be creating more things later, make more elaborate text field variants and so on. So I think I'm going to go for like a section on just a text fields. And I'm going to put this one over here, right? Then something similar I have a suspicion, the suspicion is going to happen uh, with is with feature cards. So there's going to be more types of feature cards. So let's just create a separate section for feature cards. And again, click twice in the corner so that we get 100 spacing from all the sides of the contents. That's a nice little tip, by the way. We're also going to create a section for navigation. And uh, yeah, just to quickly explain, by the way, why I'm doing all this. Now, take a look over here at from the distance. If you are searching for a section that says navigation, if you have a headline over here, it is difficult to see. Whereas with these like official native Figma sections, you can see the labels from a mile away. So that's very practical and it just makes it more, in my view, easier to navigate. So that's one of the reasons also why I'm doing this. So let's go for navigation on this one. Double click again. Yeah, icons, they are already in place. Let's also just to make it, oops, no. Let's just to make it consistent. Let's just double click as well. Then we're going to have, I think, a section with a bunch of like helper components. Let's just rearrange them, right? Let's make this darker so that it's visible on the background. Let's go for 50 on the spacing and double click, let's say helper components or not helper. That's a bad name, like not very descriptive. I would say let's call these for now iOS components, right? Because they are basically just what you can find in the native and like native uh, iOS. This is basically something that we do not determine. This is something that the iPhone does since we're designing for an iPhone mostly. But no, this is actually also usable for, of course, if you're designing for Android, you just change what's here. All the rem all the stuff apart from this is, is basically doesn't matter, right? Yeah, I take that back. We are not designing just for iOS. Awesome. So I think, brilliant, we have text fields, feature cards. Then with the interactive pie chart, now here's the thing. I don't think it's very good to use animated components like an entire section for just that. And the reason for this is, I think it, it would make more sense to split this by usage. So why don't I put the chart, the pie chart, the interactive pie chart here, instead of putting it in like an interactive section, I'm just going to say data visualization, right? Because there's going to be definitely more stuff upcoming where we learn how to visualize data in an app. This is just the first component that we have. And uh, yeah, I think that's why we also have feature cards. That's why we have text fields as a separate section. So let's go for, let's go for that. Okay. I think that's the smartest way to do this with all the other future updates in mind. Okay, so we have iOS components, we have icons, navigation. Where would these go? I mean, with these, I would just create something like UI basics. You know, so let's just do that. Let's rearrange it. And then we have navigation and then also i think we could create a new section for just for loading animations so just say loading or, or not even animation just like loading components let's say or just loading let's just keep loading we do have this 
we do have this all right let's put all of these at 2000 2000 in terms of width yeah here's what i'm thinking right i think also we're going to create more loading animations so let's make them make this ready for more stuff we're going to start from the most basic right so definitely the most basic is going to be at the top so that's why text fields goes around lo goes above loading and also above data visualization because i don't think that's critical that that basic that important what's going to be at the very top is going to be definitely text styles colors ios components and icons i think we can agree that these are the most most basic ui elements or like design system elements let's just spread these apart by 200 and with icons i think we could rearrange these so that these it's like small icons on the left and big icons on the right these could be called like navigation icons navigation icon then we got the big icons on the right with the spacing of 50 and then also we have this big icon sync across devices we could add the word animated like here big icon animated so animated icons will definitely be in the icons section so that would be like this let's just move all of this over here more towards the right icons iOS components, let's keep the spacing at 200, 200, we got colors, and we got text styles, what the, and text, text styles, okay, and we got UI basics, I think these are going to be, there's also going to be more stuff, so let's just prepare for that, and then we have the buttons that go below the UI basics, we got navigation, in a more complex design system, you would see all of this being spread out across multiple pages. But since we're keeping it lean and this is rather simple, this is plenty, right? So let's go for text fields over here. And then all the remaining stuff is going to be here as well and here as well. And then now, that's, here's the thing, right? What to do with these animated components? I said that I'm not going to split by animated and interactive components, that I'm going to split this by usage. But this is, these, are, these have such a different usage, right? Because this is like a highlight. This is like updating live. And headline fade out animation, that's also so specific that I think I'm going to just re arrange these across my existing sections. I think, honestly, blinking highlight and live update indicator could go into data visualization. You are highlighting data. This could be used for a chart. This could be used for, again, visualizing data. So I think this makes the most sense. I think it makes the most sense to go to data visualization. And with the headline fade out animation, I think we could, I think we could go for UI basics. Yeah, I think we could do that because it's like a rather basic thing and it's not that highly specific, to be honest. Now, I think we could also extend this a little bit and rearrange it here just to tidy it up and we could remove this entire section. All right, and with the loading, let's just rearrange it. also to start with the biggest one. And yeah, I think this is looking pretty good. I think I'm just gonna shrink this just a tiny bit so that it can be placed to next to each other. And then with the rest, I'm just gonna rearrange it here. And nice. All right, I think we're done here with the audits. I think we're done here with also the uh, the changes. And now if you take a look, if you take a look at the file, I hope it's not just me, but I feel like this is way more, let's just extend this. I feel like this is way more, way easier to navigate than 
whatever has been in place previously, right? You have clearly labeled sections, you have more space to add things, and you have the design on the right, design system on the left. All right. So yeah, I think we're done here. So don't forget to take a look at the link in the description if you want to support the channel and get the source file for this. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. And I will see you in the next one.